Hey guys, my name is Loveless and we are back with um, Quirk Knife. This story is just gonna get juicier from here. It's amazing. I just love it. And also I even got um, the A-OK -okay for even reading this story from the author herself or themselves. Don't know the gender. Um, so yeah, I'm like super, super excited to actually keep doing this because it's amazing. And of course, I'm going to put the credit for them and I'm going to put for this chapter down below in the description if you want to follow along. If not, you can listen to me read it to you, which is awesome. This is awesome. It's, it's all good. So let's get straight into it. Mitski was furious. Mitski was furious. Her best friend's boy was missing and no one was looking for him except for Mitski and Matsure. It was like she was letting Ink go down in some way. Even though there was never a specific promise, it was more of a mother's promise. If something had ever happened to herself or Matsure, uh, Mitsuki knows Inko would have done everything in her power to protect Katsuki, love him, and keep him safe. Yet, Mitsuki couldn't even find her son. You don't know Izuku like I do. He wouldn't just go missing without telling anyone. He's not rebellious. He's responsible. I'm telling you, he might not be safe. The officer continued to brush away her, explaining moronically that they're doing everything that they can. You're doing everything that you can? You haven't done jack shit. Minsky could barely hear the man on the other side of the phone as her anger continued to cloud her senses. It's been a week, a week. This young boy is missing and you're not even listening to me. When the officer began to give his usual speech once again, Minsky hung up the phone aggressively and resisted the urge to smash the device to bits. Katsuki was sitting at the table with his eyes cast down low, poking at his dinner. Katz. Mitsuki sighed. Have you heard from Izuku? Could you call him for me? Her son looked at her with a blank expression. One was rarely given. I haven't heard from Deku. Mitsuki frowned because that wasn't her entire question, so she asked again. Could you call him then? Katsuki pulled a strange face, his nose scrunched up slightly and his eyebrows slanted in what Mitsuki could have sworn was worry. I don't have his number. Mitsuki thought malfunctioned for a brief moment. Huh? What do you mean? He's your friend. Why don't you have his number? When Katsuki didn't yell back or throw out an insult, Mitsuki couldn't help her suspicious thoughts begin circling in her mind. Katsuki opened his mouth and she thought she might have been about to receive a proper response, but instead, the kid quietly said, I'm gonna train. He stood up suddenly and ran to his room, returning not even a minute later in his workout clothes, putting on his shoes on and slipping his earphones in and running out the door. Mitsuki was aware of Katsuki's self-made training regimens to prepare for the UA entrance exams, and Fridays were specifically reserved for rest days, so this jog was clearly to avoid whatever conversation Katsuki saw coming. I'm sorry, Inko. Mitsuki spoke quietly to the empty room. I'm so sorry. Mitsuki fell onto the couch and let her head fall into her hands. Her shoulders began to shake as tears sprung to her eyes. Never in a million years could she have prepared herself for a situation like this. How could anyone? And what if that asshat of a father tries to get his hands on Izuku again? Mitsuki sobs intensified. Mitsuki sobs intensified as the thought she wouldn't let him take Izuku. Not when Inko fought so hard to rid Hisashi from their lives. He used to be a good man when they were all young and stupid and so easily manipulated. Hell, even Mitsuki was manipulated. Hazashi was the man who knew how to get what he wanted and would do anything to do so. But they all realized that too late. When Inko was diagnosed as quirkless, things got so much worse. Inko was so brave though. So, so brave. But she was still hurt. 
and Izuku was too. Mitsuki couldn't think of anyone else who could help, not when the police were treating the situation like Izuku had done this before. Katsuki specifically said that Izuku didn't have any friends. That was the immediate red flag. If the home was destroyed, who would he stay with? What if he was alone? And Katsuki has never been the emotional person, but she expected him to be a little bit more distressed about what had happened with Inko, especially since Izuku is missing. The two didn't hang out anymore, but it probably because the school and Katsuki was talking was taking his training so seriously that he could only hang out at school anyway, right? Unless something else was going on, something that Katsuki was hiding. Mitsuki took the opportunity to scream a string of creative swear words in the empty house, ignoring the fact that the neighbors could probably hear her as clear as day. This, everything about this mess, and Mitsuki didn't know how to fix it. Izuku had been completely attached to his new project, he had already several new notebooks and pencils. Wait, not steal, the proper term is borrow. And not to brag, he's getting pretty good at it too. Turns out, looking normal and going unnoticed all of your life really has some perks when you were homeless. No one bats an eye at a shy, plain looking kid when there are so many other people that have unique aspects about their appearance to look at. For example, Izuku needed some deodorant from a drugstore the other day. If he was someone who stood out more, there's a large chance that the cashier would have noticed the child stuffing hygiene products down his pants. But the lady was instead in a trance, too busy looking at another man with a literal halo on around his head. Like some sort of fucking angel. What kind of quirk? You know what? Doesn't matter. What does matter is that Izuku skipped out on the store with not only his new deodorant, but also a bottle of cold coffee, some pretzels, and a scratch ticket. He didn't win, though. Don't get Izuku wrong. His morals are still intact. Family stores are the most definitely off-limits. He only goes for the chain businesses that have been scamming the public for so long. Not like they would miss some borrowed products here and there. Hygiene has always been important to Izuku, and sneaking into gyms with showers is way too easy. They need to make some investments for security plans because if a 14 year old child can come and go as they please, pretty much anyone can get in. Izuku was now back in the library where he spent his entire day, only leaving to borrow some necessary items and to continue the other project of cleaning the beach. In fact, he already moved on to larger objects like loose tires, chairs, and desks. He was currently scanning through all his notes, muttering quietly as he recounted what he already had. It started off as researching about different types of metals, trying to figure out what would be best suited for his uh, goals. The most obvious answer would be to get his hands on some tungsten, but even Izuku could admit that it would be next to impossible, let alone expensive. So for his backup plan, Izuku was looking for a variety of metals types that include steel and iron instead where they would be more durable, yet not impossible to find. As Zuku began to delve deeper, he moved on to different throwing techniques, discovering his preferred grip, the hammer throw. Sure, it might be basic, but it allowed for accuracy and a forceful throw. Izuku can already get a decently close to his target within 10 meters. He's only improving. There's only the pinch grab for the throwing knives in which Izuku wanted to start practicing, but he had to find some decent knives first to borrow. You here again? Oh, fuck. Izuku startled and dropped his pen, spinning in his seat to see Lanky leaning over his shoulder. You don't sneak up on people like that. Lanky's face stayed the same. I didn't sneak up on you. You just need to be more situationally aware. 
Izuku pressed his lips in a thin line and they stared at one another, neither breaking the silence. Eventually, the smaller of the two clapped his hands together and picked his pencil back up. Right, I'm just gonna... He slowly turned back to the desktop and wrote some more notes down. Lanky's reflection still showed on the screen. A minute passed and Lanky didn't move, simply hovering over... Izuku like he was some sort of toddler watching his parent cook dinner. You've been doing research about knives this entire time? The purple-haired boy spoke again, Izuku not really picking up on the question. Yes? Lanky snorted. There must be a reason you're doing it. What's with this motherfucker being cryptic? Uh, yeah. Izuku beamed and turned around again. For science and, uh, curiosity. Lanky blinked slowly, much too similar to a cat, then leaned down. Bullshit. Izuku laughed and turned around. You're funny. The boy walked around to the other side of the table and fell into the seat, leaning back and crossing his arms over his chest, purple eyes analyzing Izuku. You're young. You should be at school. Izuku scoffed with fake offense. Excuse me? Young? I'll have you no good sir, I'm 14 years old. You said it yourself, I'm just small. Lanky tilted his head. Okay, 14 years old, you should be at school. Uh oh, Azuka didn't really want to answer questions like this. Uh, why is Lanky all about socializing now? Just climb back to whatever hole you came from. Fucking hermit, fucking hermit crab. Well, I could say the same to you. Izuku pointed his pencil towards the boy. You can't be much older than me. I'm 14 too, and I do go to school. Online, that's why I'm here. Online school? Izuku should look into that. He still need education, probably. Online, huh? Is it expensive? Or is it free? Do you go into school every day like a routine, or is it like meetings? Oh, wait. Maybe all about the lessons are pre-recording, so... Izuku muttered off and tapping the eraser of his pencil on his forehand. Lanky stared at him with a bored expression. It's a pre-recorded lesson. You move at your own pace, with exceptions. You have four months to complete each semester and obviously there's two semesters. You select your classes and it's free tuition, but you do have to do an online assessment to be allowed entry. Lanky interrupted. Izuku pursed his lips, just online exam? Izuku could probably pass. Again, probably. So let's say I wanted, to, I wanted to do the same program. I just like the tests if I pass, I'm in. Linky nodded, interesting. Izuku sat quietly for a moment to mull over the idea, not noticing Linky leaning over and ripping a piece of paper from his notebook. He slid the paper back over with a link written on it. That's the school. Izuki immediately typed it on the desktop, frowning when it didn't show up. It's not there. You're mean. Lanky rolled his eyes. You need a private computer from a school. Public library desktops won't do. Izuku couldn't help but frown that settled on his face. Because once again, we are back to the whole my items and belongings are all currently crushed under what remains of my apartment issue. He could attempt to steal a laptop. He didn't think he was ready for that. It would be much more difficult. You're making a strange face. That's just my face, Izuki shouted back, the old woman hushing them from the front desk. You don't have a computer? Again, with the cryptics. Why doesn't this kid just ask questions like a normal, functioning human being? No, I don't. Oh well, education's overrated. Linky rubbed the back of his neck and sunk further into his chair. I have an extra... Was he offering to help Izuku? Uh, but I don't have any money. I can't pay you. The tall boy stood up and cracked his neck quietly. It's fine. You can owe me a favor or something. Azuku smirked. Kinky. No! Lanky smacked the back of his head with actual emotion displaying on his face. That was the first. You're a little shit, you know that? 
Izuku smirked wider. Sir, yes, sir. I'm not sure what I could do for you, but let me know when something comes to mind, I guess. Lanky clicked his tongue and disappeared into the back room, returning moments later with two laptops in hand. Here, you can use the Wi-Fi here. Kiabu won't mind. What? Is that a guard dog? Seeing his confusion, the boy followed. She's the librarian and my current foster guardian. So, another orphan? Twins! Oh, does that mean we're friends now? Izuka asked and opened the laptop, Lanky returning to his previous seat. No. Aw. Izuka whined. Come on! You know what? Too bad. We're friends now. My name is Izuku Midoriya. What about you? Lanky sat quietly for a moment, eyeing Izuku once more, like if he looked hard enough he would discover the secrets of life. Hitoshi Shinso. His first friend. Not that Izuku would have ever said that out loud, because that would be really lame. But suck on that, Kachan. Izuku hummed excitedly and found the school website, finding the exam and clicking on it without hesitation. You should study first. Lanky, oops, uh, Shinso pointed out. It's kind of hard. Izuku waved his hand weakly. It's do or die. What? Azuku looked at the three-hour timer at the top of the page and cracked his knuckles, diving right into the math session. Azuku finished the exam in one hour and 16 minutes. Azuku passed with a 98%. This is an ugly beach. Azuku laughed at Shinso's blunt statement, tossing his stuff bag next to the rock and got right to work, scooping up a broken radio and tossing it into the wheelbarrow. He had found in the next pile over, although he had to reattach the tire. I told you that. Why are you surprised? Shinso shrugged and kicked the rusted pot. I thought you were being dramatic. You tend to do that. I do not. You literally just did. Azuka could have sworn Shinso smiled slightly as the two fell into an easy banner, something that becomes comfortable between them. Azuku enjoying Shinso's company in the past few days and it made online school slightly more enjoyable. Although they didn't have the same class since Shinso was farther ahead. Azuku enjoyed school either way. The classes were easy, the teachers can't purposely give him well marks anymore because they have no idea he's quirkless. Are you going to high school? Azuku asks, continuing to toss things into the wheelbarrow. Um, Shinso hesitated for a moment and he quickly cleared his throat. Yeah, but I haven't decided where yet. Azuku sensed a lie but he didn't want to push his luck and ask any more questions. You don't talk about your parents, Shinso said carefully and beginning to help with cleaning. They should be wondering where you are, Azuku froze, realizing he hadn't thought about his mother in a while. How could he have forgotten about her so easily? Yeah, he chuckled nervously. My mom works a lot. There's no dad in the picture, so where I am, though, don't worry. She knows where I am, so don't worry. What? She knows where I am, though. Don't worry. Yeah, if heaven exists. Oh. Shinso said quietly. Okay. I thought maybe... Never mind. Izuku raised an eyebrow, but didn't want to say anything. The two cleaning in silence as the sun slowly went down. Shinso! Izuku laughed as he said... A little target practice, blowing some sand off his knife and taking aim, using the recent technique he had, learned to hit the bottles. Damn, he huffed when he missed it by a few inches. I'm getting closer. Shinto stood there with his eyebrow raised. Please don't stab me. Izuku laughed loudly and took another throw, the bottle breaking it in two when the knife pierced it. Yeah! Izuku would have said Shinso seemed impressed or something of the sort. So this is what you research it for? Yep. Izuku jumped, popping the pee 
I'm already getting better at it. It's all about math, to be honest. So you calculate the throw in your head? Izuku nodded. Mm Mm-hmm. It's getting dark. I'll I'll walk you home. And then I've got to go home, too. Home is known as an old storage building. He found abandoned a few blocks away. It had good space for knife throwing, though. Yeah, whatever. Shinzo said, already starting up the steps, while Izuku chased after him, going the long way to bring the whale barrel up the ramp. So there must be a reason you're cleaning the beach, Shinzo said. Izuku frowned. Dude, is there a reason you don't ask questions like a normal person? Just ask me why I'm cleaning the beach. No. Fine, I'll do it. Izuku lowered his voice. Hey, Izuku. Why you're cleaning the beach? He returned to his normal voice. Great question, Shinzo. There's no real reason. I just found this place one day and decided, hey, I wonder how long it will take to clean. And here we are, cleaning. Shinzo looks unimpressed, but not it. Then I'll come with you to help. Really? The small boy gasped. It's because we're friends, isn't it? We're not friends. We're totally friends. The best of friends. No. Yep. Besties. (laughs) I love this. I love this. I oh my gosh. I love this so much. I love I love the banter that they both have. It's amazing. And I'm It's so good. Just more of him being like little shit. I love it. And then just, mmm. He tells she don't stand a chance. It's the power of friendship. I swear to God. (laughs) I love it. And if you want to see more of this and also me trying to voice act, kind of, you know what to do. (laughs) 